Hey, this is Matthew from BI Polar. In today's video, we're going to look at some of the most basic aspects of Power BI data flows. Specifically, we're going to look at how to create them. Let's check it out. Power BI provides multiple ways to create data flows in the Power BI service. In this video, we're going to look at the first option, which is the basic one, how do we create data flows by adding new entities using Power Query Online? Let's jump into the, uh, the demo, let's take a look. As you can see, here we have a Power BI workspace that has a bunch of data flows in it already. We wanna create a new one, so we will come up to the Create menu and we'll choose Data Flow. Here we have four different options to start creating the data flow. For this video, we're going to choose the first one, which is to define new entities using Power Query Online. The first step that we take when defining a new entity is to select the data source that we're connecting to. This is a very familiar experience from Power Query, so we're going to first of all select, in this case, Azure SQL Database. In here, we will add the server name and the database name. We'll also provide connection details, uh, including the authentication mode, username, and password. And then we'll choose Next. Here in our Navigator view, we can select all of the tables or views that we want to load into our data flow as entities. For this demo, I'm simply going to select the Customer table I can preview it to make sure that it's the data that I want, and when I'm ready to proceed, I can choose Transform Data. This will take me into the Power Query Editor, where I can take steps such as renaming the entity and doing data transformation and filtering on the data inside it. You'll probably notice that there is a warning here in the Power Query Editor. When I look at this warning, I can see that this query contains columns with complex types that aren't supported by the CDM folder format that underlies data flows. And if I scroll all the way to the right, I can see that this is because when I connect to a SQL database, Power Query will automatically add related tables as columns with the table data type and I could expand these out to get uh, columns from these tables or aggregate values. But for this demo, I will simply highlight them and I will remove the columns and the error message goes away. To complete this demo, I'm going to add one more entity to this data flow. I'm going to choose Get Data from directly within the Power Query Online Editor and going through the same flow, I will select the data source type, in this case, a text file. I will paste in the URL for the text file that I'm connecting to. And similar to what I did for the SQL data, I will change the query name and can apply any transformations. Once this is done and all of my entities are defined, I can choose Save and Close. And here I'll be prompted to enter a data flow name and an optional description. When I save the data flow, I'll be prompted to either refresh or to set up a refresh schedule. For this demo, I will choose to refresh now and Power Query Online running in the Power BI service will immediately connect to those data sources that I used uh, when defining these entities. It will pull in the data, transform it the way that my entity queries define, and it will load that data into the underlying CDM folders. Once this is done, I can connect to these data flows using Power BI Desktop. Here I am in Power BI Desktop, and I'm going to choose Get Data. I'm going to choose Power BI Data Flows as my data source and I will navigate to the workspace and the data flow that I've just created. Now, as you can see here, when I expand this out, I have the two entities. 
I can select them, preview them, and load them into my Power BI desktop file to build a data set, visuals, and perform my analysis. In this video, we've looked at one of the simplest end-to-end -end use cases in Power BI data flows. We've connected through a workspace in the Power BI service, we have created a new data flow, and we've defined the entities in that data flow manually by using the Power Query Online Editor. Once we're done, that data is available for us to use and reuse in the Power BI service for all of our downstream efforts. In our next videos, we will look at the three additional ways to create data flows. I hope I'll see you there.